hope you're doing great. Uh, and then uh, he went on to say that he was going to get back to me uh, and uh, or to, to call him back. So I called him back and he said, we're going to do season three. And, um, and that I would be in it. And I thought, oh boy, this is going to be something. It was something uh, for everybody else. <laughs> but not for me. And I wanted, you know, I thought when... Uh, when <laughs> I thought when we did the Between Two Worlds thing, you know, I thought it would be more of that. That we would go in this world and then that, the real world and then that world. And, the, and then I had another brilliant idea. I said, maybe Leland has a twin brother, Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Palmer, why not? You know, give him a little bald spot, maybe a mustache. You know? No, nah, he wouldn't go for it. I think it was Mark Frost that uh, ruined that idea. Yeah. Anyway, no, I, yeah, I felt, uh, I, I, I enjoyed season three and I thought visually, it was visually stunning. Uh, and um, she was excellent in it again. And, and I was happy the way it ended up at the Palmer House. Yeah. 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 I Oh, thank you. <laughs> I missed you too. What was your least favorite thing about doing Twin Peaks and why? Oh, <laughs> wow. I, I, I don't know that I had a, a least favorite thing. Uh, maybe um, maybe the, the, the little dressing room. <laughs> the honey wagon dressing rooms, but you know we all had we all shared the same kind of dressing room, so nobody was really special except for Kyle. He had his own trailer. <laughs> this is the for the for the past thirty five years. Sure. The whole thing. Um, I have one. <laughs> it's uh, thinking about my parents and and knowing that they. Um, now, because I'm a parent, sorry, I'm hitting my mic everywhere. I forgot that I have more than one mic on. Um, as a parent, I can only imagine what that would feel like to see, even though you know that it's acting and you know that it's pretend and they've met David and David is so nice and loving to them and warm to the people that he meets and, um, and they knew that I wanted to act and um, so they were supportive of all of us kids creatively, but I still um, just have a hard time with that part of it, knowing that the image of their daughter, what is my mic, is this my yeah, voice? Right. <laughs> <laughs> is this better? Yeah. Oh God, I was like, I am losing my mind. I'm hearing these other voices in my head. Okay, um, <laughs> so yes, knowing that that image of their daughter um, dead, uh, even though it's not their daughter, but you know, still in their mind as a parent, that for me, of everything, that was the hardest. It's just my heart going out to them and, um, family members. Well, I get, get, to get back to your question, I think the main, uh, I didn't want to be the killer, you know? <laughs> I, did not, I did not want it to be me. I said, if it can be anybody else, Ben Horn looks good to me, you know? <laughs> Could be anybody else, but not me, please. Okay. I, I just uh, I had my own little baby daughter. She was like uh, two years old at the time, and the whole idea of uh, being the murderer of my daughter on the show uh, was just uh, didn't sit right with me. In fact, uh, I, I had some bad nights uh, thinking about it, and uh, at one point, I even considered uh, not doing it not doing the show, the reveal show. And then David called us all into that room, you know, it was Cheryl and myself and Richard Beamer, Ben Horn, Mark Frost, David Lynch, 
They were all sitting cross-legged on the floor, and it was a dark room, devoid of furniture, had a lava lamp, I think, in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, one of those, you know, that's what, it, that's what it was, yeah, like a waterfall lava. <laughs> and so I sat down cross-legged on the floor, and, and David reached over and he said, uh, Ray, <laughs> it's you, it was always you. <laughs> and I thought, oh man, I believe I said S-H-I-T uh, out loud. <laughs> at that moment, and then he proceeded to say, but Ray, it's going to be a beautiful thing. And he, and he went on to explain how uh, it was going to happen and how I was going to die, and I would die in the arms of Cooper, and he would be reciting the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and, and I would be looking down a long, terrible tunnel, and at the end of that tunnel would be a white light, and, and standing in that white light would be my daughter. Laura, and she would have her arms out to me, and she would forgive me. Ah, I get, uh, I get, I get weird every time I even talk about it. But um, um, David explained it so beautifully that uh, I said, "Okay, let's do it, man. Let's go." Um, Gung ho. And uh, it was a memorable episode. Uh, Tim Hunter directed it, and, and uh, the water was sprinkling down on me, and, and Kyle was great, and uh, um, it was redeeming for me as a, as a human being, not only as an actor. And so it made it all all right. And then I was glad to leave the show. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was never glad to leave the show. I didn't want to leave town. I love these people. Uh, but I had to. Came back in the last episode with uh, white contacts and uh, acting very strangely. And, uh, but I was grateful for it, you know. Yes, sir. Oh, mercy dokes and dokes, they dokes and little lambsy divey, a kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? Oh, now the words sound queer and funny to your ear, a little bit jumpy and jivey. Say mares eat oats and does eat oats and little lambs eat ivy. Oh, mercy dokes and dokes, they dokes and little lambsy divey, a kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? A kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? I was doing a show and I played this rock singer and, uh, and the band blew out my left ear. I, yeah, I, I played it for about nine months, you know, and uh, my hearing's never been the same since, so. And I should get one of those little hearing aids, you know, that you can't see and, and stick it all the way in the ear. Yeah, like Gordon Cole. Yeah. Hey, Cooper. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, see, I didn't even hear what she was thinking. I was actually making a joke. She was. Our acting. You ask about our acting training. Um, I just, I just started doing it when I was about 13. And I learned from others at Columbus and Kenley. Uh, was a big uh, summer for me. And, uh, and uh, I was a theater major at Kent State University. And I, I graduated from there in 1969. And, and then I went right to New York and everybody was telling me, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have, you know, drive cabs and wait tables for about five years. Well, I walked into an audition at CBS, an open audition. Oh. I got the job. Yeah. It was a soap opera called Love of Life. Oh. I started it in 1970, and uh, I, w I did about 900 episodes, and uh, left that show in 1977, and went out to California to seek my fortune. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's, that's how it all began. I just kept doing it and learning, learning from other people. And I still, to this day, 
all the actors that I work with, I learn from. And I learn sometimes what not to do and a lot of times what to do, so. Yeah. she turned into Carrie Page? Sort of, yes. We don't know. I mean, I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> See, this is what I love about it, is getting to hear what you guys think. So, and I'll just answer very, very, very briefly. Um, what I think the story is might be completely different than what David thinks the story is, and what you think the story is, and what he thinks the story is, and what he thinks the story is. And I think that's one of the coolest things about David, and that it may change. I may, I may, I may change my mind like seven more times. <laughs> yes. The pilot, and as the show, show progressed, um, David and Mark would see things that they wanted to develop more, and uh, and they would, and 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 they saw that uh, my my character was so vulnerable and, and they made him do some, you know, crazy th things out of grief. And, uh, and then they saw that it worked out okay, so let's do even some more stuff like that. And, and that's sort of the way they played it from week to week to week to week. And uh, you're right, David never wanted to find out who the killer was. Um, he wanted it to go on and on and on. And ABC, uh, that time it was owned and operated by Capital Cities, and uh, I don't think they liked the show really from the get-go. Bastards! <laughs> yeah. But you know, that's the way big corporations are sometimes, and, um, but they were forced to put it on the air because everybody uh, liked that pilot so much, and, and uh, so they kept bugging David and Mark, you know, of, of, to find somebody, you know, <laughs> pin it on somebody. You know, so, and, and then we'll move on. We'll do other stuff, you know, and uh, well, it was a little too premature, I think. And uh, so it gave also a, cap, a reason for Cap Cities not to keep the show on the air for very much longer. You know, so after, you know, after the 30 episodes, yeah. and then uh, David hadn't had his fill of it, so he, he wanted to do Fire Walk with me. And, and, uh, and we were very happy to, to come back. And, and then again, from 25 years. I did office hugs for them. And uh, <laughs> um, I showed how to, how to give a proper office hug. <laughs> and then, uh, see, Tim and Eric were big fans of Twin Peaks. This is how I got much of my work <laughs> during the 90s. You know, people, if they didn't give me the job, they at least wanted to meet me, you know? And, uh, <laughs> A lot of, yeah, and I, like uh, Diane Keaton, she directed an episode, but after I was gone, so she was doing this TV movie, so she called me in, you know, to maybe play the father, and uh, she gave the part to Bo Bridges, <laughs> and, and uh, I think she just wanted to say, you know, see me and say hello, and, and that happened uh, quite a few times, but other times, they actually gave me the job, and I was, uh, I was thrilled when that happened. The humor, oh, in the show? Oh yeah, we were aware of the humor in the show, well, even while we were doing it. I mean, yeah. You can laugh out loud. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, I've forgotten it 
much sense, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was wondering, after being in a David Lynch film, is it hard to recover and get back to normal? Or? <laughs> I, I've definitely not gotten back to normal. <laughs> if I ever even started at normal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, huge. There is a huge recovery time now. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, she needed a couple of weeks just to get some sleep, really, yeah. actually. Because, you know. Yeah, and it just uh, it is it is um, it's a very different way of working creatively than um, working with David and working on this show and working on this character is a different way of working than a lot of other jobs, and so. Um, it requires a different part of my brain and a different skill set and a different part of my, like for example, going to work in the red room, right? That's a very different part of creativity than going to play a doctor on a show. So neither one is harder or different or better or worse, it's just very different. So um, there is just recovery Recovery time, but there's recovery time for uh, for a lot of jobs too. But yeah, for this character. Yeah, how I met your mother is a little easier to do than. Uh, <laughs> and I did do that, and I and I do fresh off the boat now. It's on ABC now, and and uh, and, um, and you know, uh, David David he sets he sets a very high bar. And not many um, movie directors uh, come close to it. There are some, but not many. And uh, he's truly a, a, a very remarkable, original individual in all in all respects. He's a he's a he's a true Renaissance man, and and uh, he he does his own thing, and he really doesn't care what the rest of the world thinks. Yeah. Picture in my back pocket for the entire series. Aww. She was with me the whole time. And then I gave the picture back to you, do you remember? I figured you'd want it back. <laughs> Probably the only fourth grade picture she had. <laughs> I, I gave it back, okay. I see. <laughs> yes, I know. I, okay. <laughs> I know. I crack her up all the time. Just, all the time. I'm just sitting up here, Cheryl. It's yeah. all good. It was funny. When, uh, <laughs> when I was killing her as Maddie. <laughs> We laugh just like this, <laughs> in between takes. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> but that was the main way to keep our sanity, you know? It was like a great release. <laughs> okay. She'll be all right in a moment. And then, we'll, and then we'll, we'll continue and we'll go on. And, and you can ask questions. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll give you our, we'll tell you our secrets. Any Twin Peaks secrets you want to know? Um, uh, he, he'll tell, he'll tell you a little bit about his life story. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, apparently, we had a great effect on this young man when he was tiny. <laughs> Ray, so Ray just likes to make me cry all the time, and that's why he forces me to tell this. I force him to tell this story. You do, you do. I first told it when we were hosting Swamp Thing at uh, Days of the Dead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Any of you, uh, have you seen Swamp Thing? Woo! Woo! Well, that's good. <laughs> I had a great time making that movie. Okay. Okay. I'm Michael Greener from Columbus, Ohio, and uh, <laughs> putting on this uh, David Lynch series here. So, for those of you who have joined me for the whole series so far, thank you so much. I don't know how many people are actually from Columbus in here, though. So, it's like, uh, it's cool. awesome. so uh, when I was nine years old, and my mom was cutting my hair in the kitchen, she wanted to watch the uh, 
Sunday night movie. Your mom was cutting your hair in the kitchen? Here we go, man. It's just going to get... You know what? This is why I didn't want to tell this again. Okay. This is why I didn't want to tell this again. This is... Uh, she's, it, was, it was falling right into the pot of stew. Okay, yeah. So, um... So, yeah. So, she wanted to watch the Sunday night movie, and, and cutting hair in the kitchen was better than the carpet in the family room with the color TV. So, we had this little black and white TV in the... Did she use a bowl, by the way? <laughs> no, I was, uh, I was a classier than that. I was, oh, a little, okay. I was kind of a skinny nerd at the time. Okay, uh, okay. And then I, then I discovered food. But, uh, <laughs> but basically, uh, yeah, so I figure Sunday night movie, Mom wants to watch it, it's going to suck. And it was Twin Peaks, the pilot. And wow. so, uh, so, I'm like, I'll give this a chance. And uh, as soon as you get the news that Laura is dead... Mm. And uh, you dropped the phone, and I was like, "This is, this is pretty good, pretty darn." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you say my you say my daughter is dead. Uh, as a little kid, I would hear a song with a sad melody, and I'd just start bawling, and I didn't know why. I never had my heart broken. I was like three years old, whatever. This scene where you said my daughter is dead. Yeah. I cried when you started crying, and my mom's like, "What the hell is wrong?" With you? <laughs> <laughs> so I knew it was an emotional, oh, emotional man. kid. Yeah. But that was just convinced that I already wanted to be an, an actor at the time, but I wanted to become a filmmaker at that point because I just was like, <laughs> I'll never be that. <laughs> and, uh, but that scene that uh, that pulled that out of me, it's, it's uh, I mean, I, I lost it. And I, I, that's what an actor was to me. So you were the first actor that just convinced me that like, that guy is really feeling this. That guy is going through this grief. That guy is not acting. And um, mm. so Twin Peaks changed my life because David Lynch can take you on this roller coaster of sad, beautiful, happy. You remember the first time you fell in love. You remember the first time that ended. And you remember uh, every horrific nightmare mm -hmm. and as it plays out. And it's all in the same two hours. Mm -hmm. And so that pilot, and you were my first crush. That's what I wanted to do. It's really <laughs> nice. But uh, but yeah, that pilot did it, and and you set everything that's happened that's kind of good in my life in motion at that point. So oh, this wow. is crazy. Yeah. This is like. So thank you for that. Let me tell that story. But uh, well, I'm glad I had <laughs> such an effect on you, and uh, you came out of it rather well. I feel a joke coming though yeah. from you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.